Hi there, brethren. Today's going to be a study on the Jesuit order, okay? A lot of people are sick to the back teeth of hearing about this subject, but people really need to be aware of who these people are, okay? The Jesuits are a filthy organisation, okay? The Lord's Word prophesies of these people, okay? They are the most evil people on this earth, okay? And people really need to be made aware of this, okay? First of all, in your King James Bible, please turn to Ezekiel chapter 22, okay? We're going to be reading Ezekiel chapter 22, and we're going to read verse 23 unto verse 27, okay? And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, saying, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor rained upon in a day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls, they have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in, in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey, to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. Perfect description of the Jesuits right there. Okay. Look here. In verse 25, there's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. You know how like the Jesuits are a small section of the Catholic priests? Okay. Like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. Do you know with false gospels? Do you know with the all the martyrs of the saints? Hmm? Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. And they, they have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed any neither have they showed difference between the clean and the unclean and the clean. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, I am profaned among them. Okay. Catholics take the name of the Lord in vain all the time. But not just that, with all these filthy scandals and everything that goes on with the Vatican, they've put no difference between holy and profane. Okay. The Jesuits are bad news. Okay. I'm gonna read out a couple of books here in this little study, okay? I got these books online for me, babe. Okay. The first one here is the secret instructions of the Jesuits. Okay. It was a brother in Christ that recommended that I got these two books, so I did so and I've been studying so expose these filthy devils and the second book is this here okay so i've got these books and they're vexed they're very vexing to read through okay they're just well the first thing we'll be reading it's going to be this okay and the jesuits have got a maxim okay right here on the just the, the insert page here okay well, hopefully the camera will show properly but, um, swear for swear and deny the truth. Okay. That's the Jesuits' first maxim. Okay. The Jesuits are liars. Okay. They're evil murderers. And people say, Oh, people just laugh it off. People just brush it off in the comment sections. They go, Jesuits, what are they? Ha, ha, ha. They are nothing to laugh about, okay? These snakes were murdering people, torturing people, doing unspeakable things, okay? They went underground for a little while until they regained control. Officially, they're in control of the world right now, okay? Trump, Jesuit trained. Okay, most of the British politicians, Jesuits. The Pope, Jesuit. Okay, Putin, Russia, Jesuit. China, Jesuit. 
okay, all the superpowers of the world, so to speak, okay, all the big nations, all Jesuit run, okay, it's not something to be taken lightly, brethren, okay, it's not something to be going, oh yeah, just, the, oh, let's laugh about the Jesuits, oh, that's them talking about the Jesuits again, it's not something to laugh about, it's not something to brush off, okay, these people are evil, they've had a plan for the past, maybe about the past six, seven hundred years really, okay, well they were reformed in, I think it was 1538 they were formed, okay, and since they've had only one goal and plan since then, to set this world up for the Antichrist, okay, the Jesuits are the evil guys, okay, Catholicism, the Vatican, that's their church, that's what they run, okay, it's how they gained their power. It's not something to just, oh, the Jesuits, ha, 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 ha. It's not something to laugh about. It's not something to brush off. It's not something to turn off and go, I don't need to listen to this. It's, you need to take heed about these people, okay? They're dangerous. They're deceivers, okay? Tell your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Okay? Now that's one thing these Jesuits do. They always claim to be Bible believers. They'll always sneak in, and then they try, they always sneak in with an attitude of love and peace and just tolerating everything or whatever. Okay? That's how they operate. They ingratiate themselves. Okay? As we see here in this little book as well. We're going to the secret instructions of the Jesuits. And I'm going to be reading. Chapter 2, verse 1. Okay? This right here. Oh. Sorry, but I'm trying to get a good angle here for you. Yeah. So. And what manner of the society must support that they may work themselves into and after that preserve a familiarity with princes, noblemen, and persons of the greatest distinction. Princes and persons of distinction everywhere must by all means be so managed that we may have their ear, and that will easily secure their hearts, by which way of proceeding all persons will become our creatures, and no one will dare to give the society the least disquiet or opposition. Okay? They deceive people with good speeches and fair deeds and things like that, okay? What these people would do if they wanted to take over, say like, say like a, a small man's business or something like that, they would, they, would, um, they would go to the business as a low level employee and they would ingratiate themselves, okay? They would even go as far as if the shop ever got robbed or something like that, they would take, they would maybe take a stabbing for the owner. And then when they survive, that, that owner would have a trust, okay? And all along, their, their only goal is to take over that man's business eventually, okay? And eventually that old man trusts him with a deed or something like that, he passes away and then they've got it all. That's how these Jesuits operate, okay? It's how they've gained their power throughout centuries, okay? They lie, they ingratiate themselves, they, so everyone trusts them, and then once they're trusted, they go get John Wilkes Booth to go shoot the Abraham Lincoln, okay? Yes, the Jesuits done that, okay? Why did they do that? Because Abraham was against what they were doing, okay? Abraham Lincoln wanted to feed the slaves, and the Jesuits were against that, okay? The Jesuits are evil people.
they come to people in, in sheep's clothing, okay? But inwardly, God's word is the best word here for it. Inwardly, they are ravening wolves, okay? They're just evil, consciousless people. Okay? Turn next to the King James Bible to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Verse 17 through 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offences contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay? Good words and fair speeches. Okay? Now before we, before we read the good words and fair speeches, okay? We're going to read what these people are really all about, okay? Where are we next? Okay, the yellow bookmark. Okay. So in these next couple of pages, I've got a, a few highlighted sections here. And this shows you right here what the Jesuit order is really all about, okay? I'm on the appendix to this book, The Secret Instructions of the Jesuits, and it's page 63, appendix number 5, on the section on homicide, okay? This is the Jesuit laws on homicide here, okay? It is lawful to kill in defence of ourselves or another, or in defence of our property or honour. You may kill beforehand any person who may put you to death. Not accepting the judge and witnesses because it's self-defence. If an adulterous priest, even aware of his danger, having visited an adulteress, is assailed by her husband, kills a man in his own defence, it is not criminal. You see that's filth. Okay. Next. Papish children may accuse their parents for heresy, although they know that their parents will be burnt for it. Not only they may deny them nourishment, but they may justly kill them if the parents would turn the children from the popish faith. Evil. Okay? It's just evil. If the parents would... Oh, right, yeah. If a priest at the altar is attacked by anyone, he may leave the ceremony and defend himself, although he may kill the assailant, he may immediately return to the altar and finish the mass. If a judge decides contrary to the law, the injured person may defend himself by killing the judge. Do people see what the Jesuit order is really all about here? Okay. Next. If a person attempts to ruin the reputation by calumny and they can avoid injury by only secretly killing them, may they do it? Certainly. Although the facts are true, yet if the culminator will not cease to publish them, they may fitly kill him, not publicly but in secret to avoid scandal. I mean, look at this, brethren. I can't make this stuff up. Okay, going down to the next highlighted section, it says that they may kill an assailant in their own defence if it can be done without scandal. It says a priest may kill those who hinder them from taking possession of any ecclesiastical office. Okay, like I said earlier on, the start of this little study, they kill their way to the top. Okay, they're murderers. It says next that they... They may wish every evil for their neighbour without sin, when they're impelled by a good motive. Okay, this is an awful thing the Jesuits run by, something called the ends justify the means. They believe that they can do whatever they want, kill whatever they want, say whatever they want, do whatever they want, as long as, as they see it as a good thing in the end. 
Okay, it's disgusting. These people are just they're evil, okay? And I know these things are difficult to listen to, but I have to read these out to really make the brethren aware of how the evil that we're really dealing with with these people, okay? It says next, it's lawful to kill an accuser whose testimony may jeopardise your life and honour. Okay, see that there? They say it's lawful to kill an accuser whose testimony may jeopardise your life or honour. Okay? Bible believers, in other words, okay, we're out there exposing the Jesuit order all the time. And according to the Jesuit's handbook here, it's lawful for them to kill us. Do you know that thing that was written in the, the Council of Trent? Accursed be all heretics. Disgusting. It says next, it's permitted to kill any person who is proscribed. It's lawful to kill those who injure our honour or cover us with infamy before persons of distinction. It says next, not only is it lawful to offer or to accept a duel, but you may secretly kill a commoner if you have no other mode to avoid the danger, because it is not murder but self-defence. You are obliged to refuse a duel if you can secretly kill your enemy because thereby you endanger not your own life, but you also hinder the commission of a new sin in offering or accepting a jewel. Evil people. Okay, the next, on to this part now. Okay, this little line here. It says here, you may charge your opponent with false crimes to take away his credit. Like a few YouTube Jesuits, like liars. Do you know those people who can do nothing but twist people's words? For Jesuits, you may charge your opponent with false crimes to take away his credit as well as kill him. Okay. Again, I'm not making this up. This is what it says. Next, it says it is going down to the next part. And this next part was written by the Jesuit Francis Xavier. Okay. It says, um, It is not mortal sin for parents to wish the death of their children, nor to desire the death of anyone who troubles the church. Okay. I think we've read enough of that filthy book. Okay. But that's the evil that the Jesuits are. Okay. They're not a joke. These, these rules that they have, there's a reason why it's called the secret instructions of the Jesuits. They were never formally published as a work, only ever written down in little scraps of paper of that, okay? They've done this so that anyone out there who tried to who tried to use this against them, they've done that so that they could deny it, okay? But th this book was found in pieces of manuscript all over Europe, even in England, okay? And when the translators all got together, they said, yeah, this is, they're all talking about this, this secret instructions of the Jesuits. And when they translated it into English, all the kings of Europe labelled them the Black Death. And they tried to outlaw the Jesuits. Okay? The Jesuits were then pushed underground, and that's when they started to lie, kill, and do everything to try and wiggle their way back up to the top. Okay? These people were evil. Okay? They're ministers of the devil. Turn next to the King James Bible to Psalm chapter. Sorry, brethren. Turn next to the King James Bible to Psalm 5. There we are. Psalm 5, and we're going to read verses 1 unto verse 10. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. 
for thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. The throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. Okay. You see this here? There is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Okay. Keep in mind what we've just read from this filthy handbook here, okay? This is what the low-down Jesuit priests are basically taught of, okay? This thing here, okay? Right here. If you just take a little screenshot of this, you can go out. Okay, that's what we're going to be reading out. It says, In brief, a spirituality is a way of living in relationship with God within the Christian tradition. All spiritualities, no matter what their origins, are the same focus. The desire for union with God, an emphasis on love and charity, and a belief as Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, beware of people like this, okay? You'll see it all the time in the comment sections, brethren. You see people that are like, it doesn't matter if we, there's like, oh, if you believe post if you believe pre-trib and I believe post-trib, well, it doesn't matter. But why do people like that, brethren? Okay? They always say things like, oh, it's just the love of God that matters. We just need to love the Lord. That's all it is. Okay, let's just put all the doctrinal differences aside. In other words, that's what these people are always saying. Okay? And it's straight out of this Jesuit handbook here, okay? No matter, all spiritualities, no matter their origins, have the same focus, the desire for union with God, an emphasis on love and charity. Do you know, oh, let's just not fall out over these doctrinal differences. We are brothers, I love you. Um, you see this, this attitude, okay, this attitude, okay? There was, um, I'm going to name the person now, because I've seen him in Brother Brian's comment section doing the same thing, okay? trying to deceive people into this trinity nonsense. His name's Ed Carson, okay? I've referenced him a few times in the, as a comment section in the previous videos, but the man's a deceiver, and, he's, and he uses this love and charity and this, oh, you still have things to learn kind of attitude, okay? And he's deceiving people into Trinitarians, okay? You look at in the comment sections, you, wherever you see him, he's trying to, he's trying to always turn people onto the trinity, okay? He's a deceiver. Okay. And the next thing you see here. Okay. Take a little screenshot of this, please. Okay. There you go. Every spirituality offers you a distinctive passage to God. Many of the most well-known spiritualities in the Christian tradition flow from the religious orders, Benedictines, Franciscans, Carmelites, and Cistercians. Each order has developed over the centuries its own spiritual traditions, and some directly handed down by its founder. Okay, you see that there. This fool. Every every passage is offers is offered to God. Do you know what I mean? This. Well, there's many paths to God or whatever nonsense. John fourteen six, Titus three ten. Okay? Simple as that. But this next part, this is something here. Okay? When you're seeing people that are using these buzzwords, you can know in fact that you're actually dealing with a Jesuit. Okay? It says, likewise, spend time with a Jesuit priest or brother, talk talk, 
kind of half half, and you will and you will begin to experience the distinctive spirituality of Ignatius Loyola and the Jesuit order, which will soon describe the sum total of the practices, methods, emphasis, and accents, and highlights of the Christian way of life that comes from Ignatius is known as Ignatian spirituality. Okay. If you do a search for the word spirituality, you will not find it in the King James Bible. Okay. But then, what the word, what the King James Bible says about the fierce speeches and good words and the inward part is very wickedness. Okay. They show this charitable, hospitalable outside. Okay. But in reality, they're just they're just these filthy, rotten dog murderers. Okay. That's that's exactly what the Jesuit order are. Just filthy, rotten, lying murderers. Okay? And the Lord's going to recompense to them. Turn next in the King James Bible to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Okay, we're heading to verse 9 there, but um, a couple of extra verses won't harm, okay? But you Jesuits out there, if you're watching this, God's not mocked. Okay. Every lie you Jesuits out there told, everyone you've murdered, every Bible believer you've silenced, God's going to recompense these. There is a day of judgment coming. Okay. And you brethren watching this, don't fear these Jesuits, okay? We trust in the living God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father, okay? He'll keep us safe. Okay. Turn next in your King James Bible to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And we'll read verses. We're just going to read the full chapter, okay? Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, a brother and minister of God, and a fellow labourer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you, and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed unto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labour be in vain. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. For now we live if, we, if ye stand fast in the Lord. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day pray, praying exceedingly that we might see your face, and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, he's the one, remember that, okay? Just going to pause there for a second, small tangent, verse 11. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our way unto you, okay? For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ is the Heavenly Father. Okay? Moving on. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. 
Okay. Thun last day to second Thessalonians chapter one. And we're going to read verses two unto verse nine. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which also ye suffer, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Okay. See all these YouTube Jesuits. See all the Jesuits. See all these liars, all these deceivers. Don't let them trouble you, brethren. Okay. And see where the lies get them in the day of judgment. Okay. God's got their number. Okay. It's, it's as simple as that. The Lord's going to judge every single one of these people. Okay. Verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of our Lord and from the glory of his power. Okay. And that's going to be the end of this study, brethren, okay? I hope that the Lord's shown you a few things in this study and that it's been a good warning and a good edification to you, okay? These Jesuits out there, they're not something to just laugh about or always oh, talk about the Jesuits again. These people are evil, okay? And people need to be aware about the Jesuits because the Jesuits are infiltrators. They try to infiltrate, okay? People really need to be aware of them. It's not something to just dust off, okay? I pray as well to those who know about the Jesuits. I pray that our Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, gives you a bit of comfort, okay? We're appointed unto these afflictions, but just remember, brethren, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, we go up to heaven, okay? The Jesuits, they burn in hell, okay? Let that be a comfort to you, brethren, okay? It doesn't matter what wicked laws are passed on this earth or anything like that. God will recompense to them, okay? Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. The Lord does not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So what is true biblical salvation? You must realise that you are a sinner, and have personally sinned against God, and that you cannot get to heaven by your own good works, only God can save you by his grace, through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus the Lord. You have sinned against God, as it is written, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I tell you nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Your good works cannot get you into heaven. As it is written, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of but the sorrow of the world worketh death, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus saith unto him, 
I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, by which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, and that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Turn you at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you, because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded it. But ye have set it not all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge, and did not choose the fear of the Lord. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. I hope this has been an edifying study to you all. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.